Hello fellow coffee botherers, I'm Kev from coffeeblog.co.uk and in this video I'm going to be talking about the three types of home espresso machines. Traditional espresso machines, what I call domestic pressurised basket espresso machines and bean to cup coffee machines. So these are the three categories of machine which often get mixed together. So the first machine I'm going to talk about is a traditional espresso machine and I'm talking here about semi-automatic traditional espresso machines and the only difference between these and fully manual espresso machines is that semi-auto machines, which most espresso machines tend to be these days, have a pump to deliver the pressure while fully manual machines have a lever such as a Lapavoni Europacola for example. So with traditional espresso machines, the user has to grind coffee into the filter basket, which is sitting in the filter holder, which we call the porter filter because it sounds more sophisticated than saying filter holder. And usually there's a separate coffee grinder required, although there are machines such as a Sage Barista range or Breville Barista range, which have an integrated grinder. The user has to control how much ground coffee goes into the basket. This is called dosing. The user then has to grab the tamper apply manual pressure to compact to compact the coffee into a compressed puck and this is called tamping and some users will go a bit further than just tamping as part of the overall puck prep including distributing and leveling the ground coffee in the basket not everyone does this some people literally just dose and tamp but there's a growing trend towards putting more time and effort into puck prep to improve results the user then presses the button the pump applies the pressure the shot is pulled either with the user manually starting and stopping the shot or using timed or volumetric buttons but that's a discussion for another video. This part is known as pulling the shot and we call it pulling the shot because baristas would originally pull a lever rather than pressing the button and pressing the shot. Sounds weird anyway. The user then knocks out the puck of coffee into the knock box and then either downs the espresso neat or manually makes an espresso based coffee with it such as mixing it with water to make Americano or mixing it with textured milk to make flat white cappuccino latte and so on. Notice how many times I referred to the user in that description. The user, that's you, is involved in every step. The good thing about this is that once you've gone through the learning curve, you have the potential to make really good espresso and espresso based coffees. Initially, you might make some awful espresso and espresso based coffees, I know I have, but after a bit, that'll change. The bad thing about it is labor intensive. You're not just walking up to a machine, pressing a button and walking away with your coffee. This is only a bad thing if you don't enjoy it though. For me, the ritual of manual espresso making is part of the enjoyment I get from coffee. Yes, there are times when I'm mad busy and I wish I could just press a button, but most of the time I really enjoy the process. So that's traditional espresso machines. Next are what I call domestic pressurized basket traditional espresso machines. These are generally up to or slightly over the £100 mark or quite a bit more than that if you're very keen on the design and aesthetics and want to pay quite a bit more for the Smeg ECF01 for example. But the usual suspects for these kind of machines will be the Grand Gazier, the Longi Dedica, Swan Retro and so on. These work like traditional semi-auto machines but they have pressurised porter filters or pressurised baskets. To me, these are just like stabilizers for bikes. I'm not sure if you call them stabilizers where you're watching this video from, but the two little wheels that attach to the back wheel when you're learning to ride a bike. Like stabilizers, pressurized baskets take away the need for skill, but also limit the potential performance. I don't think anyone's gonna attempt the Tour de France with stabilizers. Pressurized baskets control the shot. They take the control out of the hand of the user to a large degree. They take away the need to dial in or the ability to dial in and they give the user the home brister experience but without the same kind of skill requirement and without quite the same level of effort and without the same level of investment and they're usually a lot cheaper. As well as pressurized baskets, they tend to have 15 or 19 bar pumps, which most traditional machines do too. But the difference is that these machines don't usually have an overpressure valve. So they're actually using a full pump pressure rather than being restricted to the standard nine bar. So these kind of machines are accessible in terms of cost, accessible in terms of skill level required, and they're slightly less labor intensive, but they're not quite traditional espresso machines. They don't quite give you the same potential shot quality. Finally, we have bean-to-cup coffee machines. 
Bean to cup coffee machines make espresso and espresso based coffees, but with far less user interaction and skill, thanks to something called the brewing unit. The brewing unit works together with the grinder to dose the basket which is inside the brewing unit and then to tamp the coffee, pull the shot, dump the used coffee into the internal used coffee container, which I like to call the dump box. So with a bean to cup coffee machine, you can walk up to it, press a button and walk off with your coffee. If you want an espresso based milk drink, cappuccino, flat white, etc., then there may be a bit of user interaction depending on the machine. Some have steam ones, some have cappuccino torres or capping cup frothers and some have milk carafes and do everything for you. Click here for the video I did on the various types of bean to cup coffee machines, by the way. The good thing about bean to cup coffee machines is that they deliver espresso from freshly ground coffee beans, but they do it much more conveniently, conveniently with a bit less time and effort and skill involved than with pressurised basket domestic machines and with significantly less time and effort and particularly skill involved than with traditional espresso machines. The bad thing about bean to cup machines versus traditional espresso machines is, as with pressured basket domestic espresso machines, they don't, in my humble opinion, quite make the same quality espresso as a competent home barista could potentially produce with a traditional machine. I'm talking specifically about domestic bean to cup coffee machines here, as there are commercial bean to cup coffee machines, which are a completely different story. Home bean to cup espresso machines tend to make okay espresso straight out of the box at the touch of a button with no learning and virtually no time, effort or ritual. So if you want espresso from fresh coffee beans at the touch of a button, beans in the top, coffee out the bottom, without the learning, without the ritual, you'll be looking at a bean to cup coffee machine. If you want the ritual, the theatre, and potentially to slowly increase the quality of the espresso you can produce, then you're heading into the home barista hobby. And this requires a traditional espresso machine. If you're on a really tight budget, but you're wanting to go down the home barista route, then you can start out with a pressurised basket machine and the Longy Dedica EC685, I think is a good option for that, as you can fairly easily switch it to a standard basket machine. And click here for more info on that. And just to clarify, the Sage, Barista Express and Sage Barista Pro are traditional espresso machines with integrated grinders. They don't have a brewing unit to replace the user. All they share with bean to cup coffee machines is the integrated grinder, that's it. The Sage Barista Touch is getting into slightly muddied waters because it's very much bean to cup when it comes to the touchscreen selection, personalization, and it's very much bean to cup on the milk side of things with the automated milk texturing. All you need to do is pour, but it doesn't have a brewing unit. So you need to do the home barista ritual thing to make the espresso. Although it does also come with pressurized baskets if you want to do that and take some of the skill out of it, but also the potential shot quality. And just a quick note on that one, I'm saying that the Sage or Breville machines come with both pressurized and standard baskets. That's true in the UK, but in the US, I believe that a lot of these machines, the Barista range, the Bambino, the Bambino Plus, just come with pressurized baskets and you have to buy the pressured baskets, sorry, the standard baskets separate. In the UK, they come with pressured and standard baskets. And this is true with quite a lot of the other entry-level home barista espresso machines, including the Gaja Classic Pro, that they'll come with pressurized baskets as well as standard baskets, or at least they'll have both baskets available. The Sage or Breville Oracle Touch and Oracle are different. These aren't bean cup machines in the traditional sense. They don't have a brewing unit. In fact, they're essentially the Sage or Breville Dual Boiler, a very capable home barista espresso machine, but with an onboard barista to take over most of the skillful and time consuming stuff. These machines will dose, tamp, auto texture the milk, and you just have to pour. And the only thing you need to do where coffee is concerned is to hold the porter filter and move it around from the grinding area to the group and then knock out the puck into the knock box. So the Oracle machines will give you home barista potential with some of the experience, but virtually none of the required skill. They'll also potentially give you a proper headache when it comes to explaining to your other half why you can't go on holiday for two years or why you can't afford new windows after all. Well, that's another story. And what's wrong with the windows you've already got anyway? So in a nutshell, just to clear this all up a bit, traditional espresso machines require a fair amount of skill development and time and effort each time you want to make an espresso, an espresso-based coffee, but have the best potential when it comes to cup 
cup quality. Domestic pressurised basket machines are generally much cheaper and don't quite require the same amount of involvement of skill, potentially when it comes to dialing in, but they also don't quite have the same potential for cup quality. Bean to cup coffee machines have a brewing unit to replace a lot of the time and effort and skill required with traditional machines and are the most convenient option, but also don't quite give you the potential for cup quality as with traditional espresso machines. Just because there's an integrated grinder, by the way, doesn't mean it's a bean to cup coffee machine. A brewing unit makes it a bean to cup coffee machine. So the barista range from Sage or Breville aren't bean to cup machines. The Oracle and Oracle Touch machines aren't bean to cup machines either, strictly speaking, as they don't have a brewing unit. But these machines do replace the home barista when it comes to skill requirement, but with clever onboard wizardry, not with a brewing unit. So hopefully this gives you a much better understanding of the different kinds of espresso machines on the market so you can decide which kind of machine is perfect for you. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget if you've enjoyed this video please click the like button. Thanks and if you have enjoyed this video why not click here to watch another one. What else are you going to do with your time? And to become an official coffee weatherer you need to click this image around here somewhere to subscribe and to become a fully accredited coffee weatherer also known as Patreon supporter just go to patreon.com forward slash coffee blog Kev. Tatty bye.